Yes, yeah, Kim said she's head of our user experience group. You know, my my role with BMI is I'm the supply chain industry manager, and, and what that basically means is I'm uh, I'm around for all things all things supply chain. So uh, a lot of, you see that a lot of you know webinars planned. I'm I'm in charge of planning the the series on. Uh, on supply chain, and the way I do that is either, either you know I would bring some of my expertise. I've been a supply chain channel for over 30 years, and more specifically, I've been with the dynamics supply chain since 1997. Uh, so we look at the dynamic products and all the all the items and parts in the We kick off this series with EDI because EDI is either one of the simplest or one of the hardest things to implement in the supply chain realm, and uh, as Tim said, we did this a series, so we can break it down. I see some of you, the initial presentations that I made, thank you for coming back. And some of you are new to this. So what I want to do is I want to introduce John. What we, what we try to do in these sessions, these are not salesy sessions. These are educational sessions. Um, so we hope the sales come after that. But, the, but this is not what this is all about. This is about helping our user base understand as much as they can on what's available to them out there. So we invite industry subject matter subject manager experts and these seminars to educate. And as I say, it's the second part, the EDI mapping, which I'm going to pay very close attention to. This one, one of the ones that I kind of get hung up on sometimes. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, John Matera. John, as you see, is a VP of marketing for Redtail Solutions, one of our trusted ISV partners in the channel, and um, he's going to walk us through this whole thing called mapping today. So with that, John, I will turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Dave. And John, uh, this afternoon, yes. This is Kim. I'm just going to put everyone on mute. There's someone that's sneaking in here, and I can hear some background noise. I'm just going to put you on mute for one second, okay? Everybody. Okay, you are now unmuted. Take it away. Okay. Thank you, Kim. So the the basic idea of EDI mapping is elementary. It's uh, to enable automated commerce by connecting electronic versions of documents, ordinary business documents, from the buyer system to the supplier's ERP system. The mapping refers more specifically to the setup of each required field in each document so that they correspond correctly on both sides of the transactions. So EDI is used in both directions, of course, for both buying and selling. Some of you may be uh, buying goods using EDI as well as selling, but today we're going to use examples of items that are being sold by a supplier to retailers. Uh, because of that perspective, we, we call the buyer the trading partner in these slides, even though, strictly speaking, uh, buyer and seller are both uh, trading partners. Now let's look at an example of two purchase orders being received from different customers. Now these impossibly small font panels here happen to be real EDI documents from Walmart and Target for similar goods. Information in these documents must be placed in the correct fields in the supplier's ERP system so that the order can be accepted and fulfilled. Now, Although these POs are for similar goods, notice that there's no similarity in where the document is found, or the data is found uh, within the EDI document. In addition, there is data that uh, the, uh, uh, the buyer wants to have on the order that's really not important for the supplier to fulfill the order. So the, the message here is the EDI you know, it's often referred to as a standard. You can see that the standard part refers only to the protocol, and the uses within the protocol are completely open. In fact, retailers exhibit uh, quite wonderful creativity uh, in defining their own specifications. So uniqueness is really the crux of why mapping is required for each and every EDI document that's used in every trading relationship. Once the maps are created, they're reusable to some extent. Uh, existing maps from Walmart and Target, for instance, may primarily require changing 
the vendor specific codes if the map is already done. So having pre-done map templates is a plus, but there really are no completely plug and play maps. We'll talk in a moment what that means when you hear EDI people say that they have universal maps. Uh, retailers are notorious for changing specifications. Uh, Amazon in particular uh, has done this as their businesses needs involve, evolve. Uh, you hear lots about uh, omni-channel sales such as you know, brick and mortar retailers using stores as e-commerce distribution centers or websites implementing new third-party logistics solutions. Every time you hear something like that, think new EDI maps and revisions to old ones. So mapping, unfortunately, is never once and done. It requires vigilance and maintenance. The mapping tasks are similar across industries, but the document fields can differ. For instance, uh, grocery purchase orders are completely different EDI documents from POs used to buy other items. Uh, lot tracking and serialization may be critical for some businesses and not important at all to others. This is another case where having the ability to handle data in maps that may not be accommodated in the in the connected ERP system uh, can be critical. And of course it's helpful for the person doing the mapping to be familiar with the particular uh, industry requirements. So let's look at mapping in real life. It can actually happen in one of one or more of uh, several places. First on the trading partner side of the map, the, uh, the EDI provider has to set up uh, the accommodation of all the fields that the, that the retailer, in this case, uh, uh, needs. And then they provide a, uh, a single sort of a canonical def definition in this direction uh, to the, 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 the trading partner. But of course, there's, there's two sides of a map. Connecting the other side to the ERP system is really what most people are referring to when they talk about EDI mapping. So that's where the complexities occur is, you know, in, in creating this bridge. Uh, it's really, to switch visual metaphors here, it's, it's complicated, uh, has to be done by people, and it has to be maintained. So here's an example of two orders received by the same supplier for the same items, one from Walmart, one from Target. Now you would expect things like item numbers to differ, but look at quantities. In one, in one instance, one case from Target and three packs from Walmart are both 12 units to the supplier. So unit of measure translation is often one of the most important things to do, and often that has to be handled in maps. Uh, the Walmart order is a distribution center replenishment order. And that kind of order, uh, the item number may imply the ship to address. That logic has to be incorporated somewhere. The supplier's ERP system might not have all the fields associated with things like uh, the SKU, the buyer ID, the Mark IV. Uh, these are things that would be important to the buyer, but not at all important to the seller, except that the buyer wants these things to show up again when they send them an advance ship notice uh, uh, and an invoice. So this is a very limited example. Imagine how complicated it can be to map documents correctly when there could be you know, dozens of trading partners with four or five documents each, which with many more fields and items than, than is shown here. It's a lot of mapping. So here are the, uh, the orders that we showed before. The data in the blue highlighted fields is the stuff that has to be kept outside the ERP and retransmitted with subsequent documents if there aren't fields for that in the ERP. So you have to have some sort of a, what's called a store and forward, strip those out, process the order, 
and put them back in the documents that you need to send to uh, to the buyer. So let's raise the the definition of mapping really to include any and all fields that are needed to get the job done, rather than talking about specific components. So for EDI ERP integration to work, all of the mapping factors have to be dealt with through some combination of EDI application software, mapping software modules, ERP tables, or custom programming. Since handling logic like we've been talking about comes up so often, standardized capabilities do exist uh, to do that while keeping you know version to version ERP comp compatibility in place. Uh, those are the solutions that are always best. Keep in mind somebody has to do the implementing and the maintaining of the maps. They're not robotic. And that's why, you know, as Dave alluded to, EDI mapping is a big deal. It comes up all the time in EDI implementations. So the ability to execute on mapping, who does it, whose responsibility before and after it is, is often the make or break factor in EDI implementations. Ability to do custom mapping quickly and at reasonable cost is often a key decision criterion that you're going to look at when you choose an EDI supplier. And so what is required of whichever party is going to be responsible for mapping? First of all, expertise in the ERP system side of it is essential. A thorough knowledge of EDI. Unfortunately, this is an increasingly rare commodity. Uh, not that many college grads are telling their parents they they really want to become an EDI B2B commerce expert, uh, but it is a clear requirement. Uh, you have to allocate the time and the money to do this work. It's really helpful to have existing relationships with trading partners, not only people who understand the nuance, but if you have people that know other actual human beings on the trading partner side, this, this can make things a lot easier, especially when you have to do the, uh, uh, the testing. Above all, diligence. This is the real important word here. It requires attention to detail during setup and then really constant vigilance thereafter. Uh, pay a lot of attention to this because many mid-sized companies um, just don't have the wherewithal to do this all in-house. And it gets more difficult all the time when you consider the rapid pace of change in the B2B and, and uh, uh, the element of B2C omnichannel commerce that you have to, to deal with as a supplier. So really the, the essence of the message here is uh, EDI mapping is arguably the most important part of uh, integration with ERP. There's lots more to do, you know, testing, translating, communications, uh, but none of that gets to happen until the maps work. Uh, mapping is not really something that should be undertaken lightly uh, or by amateurs. Uh, you know, when you think about it, EDI is your order to cash and or procure to pay lifeblood. If it doesn't work, you're not in business. So above all, make sure that your mapping resources and capabilities are, are trustworthy and available. Uh, that's what's going to keep you in business. So uh, we've left a generous amount of time for questions during this session. Uh, I hope I didn't go too quickly for folks, but uh, Dave, uh, if you want to open up the floor, I'd be glad to entertain anything that people have on their minds.
Or if you want to open everybody up to ask questions rather than typing them in. That you know, would be fine people with me, yeah. People you know, type them in less than, than actually ask the questions. No, wait a second. As as uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is part two in the three part series on EDI. As you can see, Thursday is the next session, um, and you know there's there's a topic right there in front of you. So I'll have to repeat that. And we're hoping that's going to be of value too. I will also say in the, in the entire area of supply chain, not just EDI. If anybody has a subject matter that they'd like us to uh, you bring internal or external expertise to to the matter. Uh, you can reach us at customer experience at internetbmi.com with your suggestions, and we will take those very very seriously. Sounds good. Everybody's unmuted, Dave. If you want to go ahead. Okay. Okay. Do we have any questions out there? We do have one question in the queue, and it says. Um, what's the first EDI webinar? Three ways to do EDI, which is right for you. The answer to that would be yes. Yes, that yes. would be yes. And, and that, that, that has been recorded and available for download as well, isn't it, Kim? That yes, it is. Yeah, that is that is available on the Internet IBMI, you know, customer facing website. Um, if you'd like to pick that up. For those of you who couldn't make it, I'm sorry, Kim, I actually missed that question on her. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. All right. Any other questions? Nothing else is in the queue right now. Okay. Any verbal questions? Or is it so clear we don't have to get into that? All right. So Dwayne and Leo, Michael, Peter, anybody out there have any questions you'd like to ask? Tim, Ross. Okay, with no questions coming, we'll probably let you off early. You get back to the important 